Hi, I'm Dr. Lauren Stryker, author of Love Sex Again. And when we talk about loving sex again, that isn't to say that women who already love sex might not want it to be just a little bit better. And there's a lot of things that, that you can do that are going to make something that's good, better, best. And one of the things that we talk about is even just something as simple as a decent lubricant. Because even young women, I mean, face it, no one is always good to go and slip sliding away every <laughs> single moment, you know? And, and there are times when you just might need a little help. I mean, we talked about earlier some women with birth control pills or with other medications, or face it, maybe you're not in the mood, things might be a little dry. And once you've had sandpaper sex, you're not going back for more. Mm -hmm. So even if you're a young woman, you should always have something around to make things slippery. And while people have this tendency to go in the drugstore and just grab the first product, all lubes are not created equal. So you do want to know something about it, which is why I spend so much time in my book talking about the different kinds of lubricants, what ingredients you should look for, what things you should avoid because it's going to be irritating or make it even worse. But one of the little known secrets out there is that most lubricants are water-based. And silicone-based lubricants are not only condom compatible, but they are way more slippery, they last longer, and they're just better lubes. And I brought some with me. I want you to, I'm going to put some on your fingers. And, and I want you to, the, the thing about it is, first of all, I want you to tell me how much it, it just feels like kind of natural. This is, this is what women normally, because I mean, you know, you want it to seem like it's all you. And it's very, very slippery, mm -hmm. very yeah. slippery. And it's going to be a little more expensive than your water-based lube, but it's something that's a good trick to know about. Another thing is, all right, let me just ask you right out. How many of you have personal trainers? Personal trainer, go to the gym, work out, all that gym. kind of stuff? Go to the gym. Get in the gym. Right. Go to the gym. Okay. How many women have a personal trainer for their pelvic floor? Oh, well, no. <laughs> of course, of course. How many of you have heard about pelvic floor physical therapy? Not no. too many. Well, let me tell you, I call my pelvic floor physical therapist my magician because she is the professional that I refer to who, for many women, makes sex not only possible if they're having terrible pain with sex, either maybe from endometriosis or maybe surgery or maybe some other problem, but also even women who are having difficulty having an orgasm, maybe from a medical problem. Because guess what? When you have an orgasm, you need a pelvic floor that's going to contract. And if you have a weak pelvic floor, just like any other muscle, sometimes you need to have pelvic floor therapy to get things in shape. So if you have a broken arm, you're going to go see your physical therapist mm -hmm. to get it better. If you have a broken vagina, you're going to go see your pelvic floor physical therapist. The point being, again, that if things aren't working right, it means something needs to be fixed. And there's always going to be a solution. It's just a matter of figuring out what is the problem and what's the solution. Because women need these solutions.